Thank you very much for joining us today here at Channel 17. And um, today we have great, wonderful guests. One of them, no one can introduce him anymore. His name is Mohammed Jafar, and the other one is an incredible uh, community-minded, oriented person. His name is Lal Pradhan. And as you probably know, today is the remembrance of the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Day. But we are here to talk about two main items. One of them is a non-citizen voting ballot item that will come uh, through the Burlington, uh, through the voters of Burlington. And also we have a great, wonderful event called New American Voting Event coming up. So without further ado, we will let our uh, guests to introduce themselves. So can we start with you, sir? Yeah. Hello. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. Uh, my name is Mohammed Jafar. I am currently working for the Burlington Community Justice Center um, as a Tamarack and Pretrial Services Coordinator. I'm involved in the community uh, and I am a longtime Burlington resident originally from Kenya. And uh, uh, thank you Ali for having me here. My name is Lal Pradhan. I am uh, one of the, you know, the people, the citizen here just recently. And I work as a liaison in the district, Burlington School District. Burlington School District, multilingual liaison. Right. And also yeah. we have a community organizer, and you work for the Peace and Justice Center? Burlington Justice. Burlington Justice Center, yeah. Uh, that's great and wonderful. Thank you both for uh, joining us here today. So uh, as we talked about earlier, um, today is the legacy of, uh, the remembrance of the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Day a civil right movement who had thought increasingly and all the time for equality, for justice, for equal pay, and for just the well-being of everyone living in the United States of America and beyond. He thought against war. Um, he thought for uh, the pay, you know, for people to organize. He was really he left us at a very young age. And it seems today if he lived, he would have been 92 or 93 years old. So I, to my guess, what do you think, what does, this, what does this day mean for you? And what do you think is happening in Burlington around, around this day? Um, <clears throat> to me, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is a legacy. Um, individuals like him throughout history create doors uh, for people who are faced with nothing but walls um, and to me uh, thinking about where I am today and what I'm capable of doing and where I'm seated in this very moment um, I'm humbled and always reminded that there are people who have sacrificed a lot to create the space that I'm able to now inhabit and and um, kind of accept and take in so to me, D Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is is a is a, is a door opener. Yes, he's a door opener, a hero, um, someone who inspired all of us as mm -hmm. you know immigrants and refugees. And Mr. Lal, what would you wanna add to that? So yeah, he's a legendary uh, person, uh, you know, who always fought for uh, the rights of the people, um, and he always you know, showed his bravery and then protected the uh, rights of the people who always fought for the rights of the people. Wonderful, wonderful. So it seems there are so many great, wonderful people who are trying to uh, follow his footstep for justice, for equality, for equity. And one of them is my guest, and one of them is uh, Mohammed Jafar, who has been working entirely uh, for equity in this community. As you probably know, um, he has a great, wonderful event coming up that will be helping new Americans to really get involved deeply in a very, very deep sense. So, Mohammed, can you tell us what is this new American voting event coming up? So, the new American voting event is a it's a leg of a three-piece project that uh, myself and a small group of community leaders have been working on for over a year. 
Um, this project first originated back um, in during the November elections last year of 2018. Um, a few Somali women uh, who recognized me came up to me. I serve on the board for the registration of voters and they were excited to vote but they felt like they didn't really know how and they didn't have enough information to kind of navigate the the polling station. Um, that was both frustrating and exciting at the same time because I was really excited that they were there and they were excited by the opportunity to vote and they wanted to be involved mm -hmm. but at the same time it was a little bit frustrating that they didn't have enough resources to actually find their way to uh, uh, to our democracy um, and so I, you know, and hearing other people kind of make the same concern, I reached out to the Secretary of State's office, I drove out to Montpelier, met with them several times, and we kind of brought, I brought a team together and we came up with this project, uh, this three-piece project that consists of videos that have been translated, or not translated, uh, videos that have been acted out of people voting, the voting process, and then we have voiceovers of them in six languages, um, six. as it was shown. Um, yeah. Yeah. We had originally asked for five languages, we got six languages, which is excellent. Um, along with those videos, we've got the both municipal and state ballots translated mm -hmm. um, for both Burlington and, and uh, Winooski as well, are the, uh, where the uh, municipal ballots are, are translated as well. Um, and then the third piece is this event, which is going to be providing this res this new resource and this information to folks and we have child care yep. we have uh, food from Kismayo Kitchen and Nepali Kitchen um, we've got speakers tremendous volunteers and and community members who are hoping to gather together and kind of bring people to the table um, you know it's it, voting is a sacred thing but there are some people some some of us come from communities and places around the world where Voting is something that could really cost us a lot more than yes. <laughs> a lot more than other people would think. Absolutely. So, you know, it's important to give people the opportunity to be a part of their own lives and to make decisions and vote on who represents them. Absolutely. And I think, you know, you s okay, Mohammed, maybe you, we can go back a little bit. How old were you when you first came here in the United States? So I was seven years old when I first came here. So uh, you are a product of the Burlington School District. Absolutely, And yes. you graduated high school and you went over uh, for college. Yep, I went and to New Hampshire for college. You yep, came back. And returned, yeah. So when you returned, you noticed that there was an issue. Mm -hmm. And the issue was the new Americans were really left out in participating meaningfully mm -hmm. in our democracy. Absolutely. So the concern came to you, mm -hmm. and then it seems you went to the Secretary of, of State's office, mm -hmm. you met with them several times, mm -hmm. and to come up with this great, wonderful idea. Absolutely. And so if, 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 if you can tell us, so there are six languages yeah. where uh, the ballot items in both Winooski and Burlington will be translated mm -hmm. on town meeting day. Mm -hmm. That's great. And also you're saying there is a video demonstration yeah. on how people can vote. Yeah. And there is an event where you will show that video mm -hmm. that you worked very hard with those community minded folks. Yep. Um, and also, would there be registration processes? Oh, people yes. Can so during the event, there will be stations for people to register. People will get information on how to vote. So there will be mock voting. You can pretend to vote. Uh, we will have all the videos playing in, in, in a loop around the, the, uh, the, uh, around the space. Um, all the actors were new Americans and community members, um, you know, and we got all, all kinds of people in the videos. And so it's, 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 it's an inclusive project and it's a project really meant to to make people excited about you know this 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 right and privilege that we have absolutely yeah. absolutely and also i think we talking about citizens i mean new americans who are legal citizens of the united states mm -hmm. they can show up to that event and now they can show up to the voting booths and vote like meaningfully like with really a lot of confidence mm -hmm. about absolutely. who they voting for and what they absolutely. voting to, about yes and That's the great. best part is, even if you're not a United States citizen, if you're going to be a United States citizen and you're thinking about wanting to vote, now is a good time to get that education so that when you are a citizen, you're able to jump right in it and be a part of the process. Absolutely. So that's the best part about it is now is a good time to learn and people are now have the ability to get that education oh at this God. event. This is so great, so wonderful. Thank you so much for your leadership, boss. Thank you. Um, so, Lau, are you a citizen of the United States? Um, yes, just recently, in November, this past November, 
Um, I got the citizenship. I'm very super excited, you know, and uh, in my entire life, I haven't voted. I haven't participated in voting. So it's super exciting event that I will be participating in where I will be just, you know, practically going through, you know, voting, doing the votings. So that gives me idea of how to vote and that would be my the first experience uh, how to vote in our democracy here. It is so great, so wonderful. I mean, I think you can give Mohammed a high five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> for helping thank you us. for organizing this yeah. event. You know, it's it's very important for yes. the new Americans especially because many of uh, the people they have never voted. Even my parents, I can just you know, I can just imagine that how exciting would they be mm -hmm. to learn how to vote because they have never voted in their life. I don't remember back in our country voting and uh, in the refugee camp, you know, there mm. was no such voting in Absolutely. the democratic system or whatever was there. And uh, coming to this country, you know, and uh, struggling to get the citizenship and then uh, that's the basic right of the citizens to vote and people would be Super excited. Super excited. To this is so great, and also it has some. I almost wanna. Um, I, I I I almost have tears that you'll be voting for you for the yeah. first time with your parents. Right. Exactly. Oh my! This is this is great, and also before you vote, Mohammed, can you tell us when is the 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 events? It talk. We, it seems we're not talking about one, but there are a couple. Yes. Okay. So there are two events. One event is on Saturday, January twenty fifth. So this Saturday coming up. Uh, from 2 to 4 o'clock. Uh, again, we will have food, we will have speakers, we will have childcare. Come, come enjoy. Uh, we'll have interpretation as well. And then the second event is in Winooski. Also, same thing. Have, we will have Kismayo ki Kitchen, mm. Nepali Kitchen, childcare and interpretation. Excellent food, excellent childcare, excellent interpretation services. That's so um, And that'll be at the O'Brien Center, 32 Mallets Bay Avenue, mm -hmm. uh, Winooski. Mm -hmm. That'll be Saturday, February 8th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So join us. Uh, the speakers will include Secretary of State Jim Condos, Hal Colston, Amila Mirzanovic, sorry, Ali Jang, and Mohammed Jafar. And speakers will flip flop between the two events, but you will you will hear from each person at one or the other. Absolutely. So I mean, it seems everyone know who is the Secretary of State. He's but who's Hal and Amila Mir Darovavich? What, what, what are they? What are their role in the community? Uh, so Hal is a community leader as well, and I believe a, repre state. a state representative, yep. yeah. Um, and then Amila is the director, actually, of United States Committee for Refugees and Immigrants, uh, formerly known as the Refugee Resettlement Program, and so she's, of course, involved in the immigration process that is kind of a mess right now, um, and, and, and that. So, and then Mr. Ali Deng is, of course, our city councilor uh, from Burlington, uh, ward eight, seven. seven? Yes, ah, yes, yes. I, I missed it. Yes. Uh, ward eight. seven, and then Mr. Mohammed Jafar. That's me. Uh, just community, community uh, organizer. Absolutely. So. And maybe you don't have it in on top of your mind, but roughly, how many meetings from the time you went to see the Secretary of State oh to um, to this event? How many meetings do you think you have done with people to to, to sell this idea? To facilitate this, yes, yes. To yes. be honest, the amount of meetings and the amount of like attempted meetings and missed meetings and and the amount of different people that jumped on board for the project and then dropped out and the amount of people that came on and then stayed and then were gone again, I can't. I don't even think I can come up with a number for yeah. you. But um, it took. I you almost felt like a consultant at some point. <laughs> 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 I was thinking I, I should try to do this for a living. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and it took you then more than a year. When this idea come to you precisely? Um, I, I think around. No, maybe I started meeting with the secretary's office in January okay. of of last year. So around about a year, I would say. About a year. Uh, I think November was kind of when everything happened, and then there was some outcry, and you know, oh, uh, here and there, there would be a month where there would be a hum because it, it, things would be busy. Whether there's the the, uh, the legislation session and or um, yeah. the, the legislature is in session, sorry, or I'm busy, but otherwise, wonderful. You know. 
Great, great. This is this is amazing. As you all heard, it will be Saturday the 25th at 2 p.m. in Burlington, AALV, also known as 20 Allen Street, one community center. And the second one is in Winooski, O'Brien Community Center, uh, Mallets Bay um, Avenue, and it will be Saturday, February 8th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And I like how you guys did it. One is in the afternoon and the other one is at the end of the day in the morning. This is, this is great. This is incredible. Um, but Mohammed, how was it like? How was, did you get some buy-in or some pushback from the Secretary of Office? Can you, can you tell us a little bit about the experience when you um, brought the idea to them? So when the issue kind of originally was raised, the Secretary of State's office did say, you know, we, did, we were not expecting this mm -hmm. um, and we just were not ready for it. So mm -hmm. I kind of asked that they respond and I, I think they responded. Uh, at first there was a little bit of pushback, mm -hmm. but as the project kind of unfolded and ideas came together, mm -hmm. uh, there was a buy-in and, and ultimately I, I'm, I'm very thankful for the Secretary's office because mm -hmm. they have funded this project from the beginning all the way to the end. And um, there's been a lot of moving pieces and there's been a lot involved in it, but I'm, I'm very thankful for that. There was a, a push at first, uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, financially, of course, it would, the, the project did cost a lot, but um, finally there was a buy-in. And mm -hmm. in the end, you know, the project expanded beyond what I actually had expected originally. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's a matter of fact that Friday I was actually invited to a meeting uh, with some community uh, organizers, people who know here, um, to talk about the outreach piece. Yeah. So maybe Lal, that's where you play a huge role. Um, yeah, I'll be I'll be reaching out to the parents. You know, I already started. I had this poster in different you know stores that are owned by the community members, mm -hmm. and I have talked to some of the people, and I had invited them on those dates and hopefully we'll have absolutely great turnout yeah and especially where there are you know ethnic foods from both somali and also from nepal yeah. mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. and those are the great two food, biggest yeah. yes two biggest yeah. uh, communities here in in the right. but mohammed you did talk about um, six languages mm -hmm. you know that are where the the bullet items will be existing in, in six different languages. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what are th those languages on top of your head. So um, the languages are Arabic, Arabic Nepali, Nepali, Burmese, Burmese Swahili, Swahili uh, French, French. Um, and what is the sixth? Kirundi, uh, no. Karen, no, uh, French. Yeah. Did I say Arabic and French? I yep. think so. I okay. the sixth one always escapes me, and yes. unfortunately, this Perfect. is the old one. This so is the old one. version. Okay. Oh, Somali. Somali. <laughs> my my, uh, my language. Somali. Yeah, yes. Somali. Okay. <laughs> That's the one I'm forgetting. This is. This is. Um, those are the languages, and the way we came up with the languages was actually we used um, USCRI mm -hmm. and AALV, which are two local organizations, obviously that deal with you know a lot of uh, uh, new Americans and migrants and folks who migrate over here. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are the languages that they identified as the top six in terms of the United States mm -hmm. uh, citizens population of new Americans. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll be able to expand on this project and there will be a, a new American event point two. Um, but this is the first and it's a pilot. Uh, anything right now, we have nothing, so anything is better than Absolutely. what we've got right now. Absolutely. So I'm very excited and hopefully Absolutely. we'll be able to expand that. Absolutely. Next yeah. mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, Lal, do you, well, now that you will be voting for the first time with your father, um, do you is think that, that this is now the driving force behind getting the new American involved? Yes, absolutely. You know, um, as I mentioned, uh, there are a lot of the community members mm -hmm. who recently got the citizens are uh, in the process of getting the citizens in the near future, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, this kind of the event definitely will have, uh, will teach them how to, you know, vote and then exercise their rights. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be an, you know, wonderful event. Absolutely. So now there is no reason to say, oh, I don't understand the Baba because now it will be translated, right? There is also no reason I don't have access to an interpreter. So there will be some type of level of education when you get there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and now I think there is also, if we change gear, we currently talking about in Burlington about one ballot item that is called 
the non-citizen voting ballot item. So that means that people who legally live here, green card holders or people who are permanent residents, yep, can now participate in the local democracy. So by giving them the opportunity to vote uh, for local elections, such as school board, such as city council, I believe mayor, um, and also for the school district budget as well as the city's budget. Um, so it has been a lot of controversy around the nation about this idea. And I am a city council, and I think what I think, I think I'm going to hold it for now. But was just wondering what you guys think of that, 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 that idea. Is it better for people to get their citizenship and become citizens so they can vote in all ballot items? Or do you think this is a good start? Or do you have any concern about, about this provision in front of us? So, you know, it, I, I think it's a good start uh, for the people living uh, who has the or who are been here mm -hmm. residing in the city legally, they should have some way to, you know, vote for their representatives or, you know, mm -hmm. to the person that they think they can represent them wherever they uh, go. So I think it's a good start uh, to me personally. I feel like, yeah, it's it should be, you know, carried out forward. And, uh, yeah, so that... Uh, it's not only the citizen who has the voting rights. Um, the people who are uh, legally here, they should have some rights to um, vote for their representatives. Okay, that's great. And Mohammed, what do you what do you think? Um, I agree and disagree with Lal. Um, so I think it is a good route and a good opportunity for people because I do think that if you live here for a substantial amount of time mm -hmm. you should kind of have a say in what is happening and what the taxes look like what you know what kind of uh, structures are coming to City Hall like you should be involved in that mm -hmm. um, the concern I have is that there are loop that creates loopholes for people to be put in positions where they can get in trouble legally mm -hmm. um, if you accidentally vote for you know president it, vote in a presidential election that can get you in a lot of trouble and I feel like especially with the current administration before you know when Obama was president mm -hmm. I think I, I, I don't think I would have thought about this I would have thought about twice about this yeah. but currently realizing the current administration and the way things are seen mm -hmm. and the the climate and the political climate I feel like it, it, it is dangerous mm -hmm. um, it's the right idea I just don't I think that there should be stipulations or policies in place mm -hmm. that make it so that there's just absolutely no doors and loopholes for people to um, find themselves getting deported by ICE. You know, yeah. That, yeah. That, that should not be happening. So uh, that makes sense. Yeah. You, you, you basically think it's a good idea, but some, you have some uh, concern yeah. about, about it. Like right now, if it was maybe Obama's, uh, President Barack Obama's you know, tenure as a executive of the nation, then you would have be saying this is ice. Yeah, this is okay. Yeah. But now knowing that ice is getting stronger and stronger, and have their foot almost everywhere with our driving licenses and everything, it's not a good idea to hold information of non-citizens that live in our community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, I think Lal, maybe you can come back to, you know, uh, how was the process like for you to become citizen? How so, how long was it? You know, I, I was here in the country legally, so um, as soon as I came here, uh, we were granted the employment authorization. So after one year, we can apply for the uh, permanent resident or the green card. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there is the, you know, time limitation. Uh, once it gets five years, mm -hmm. then I can... Uh, apply for the citizenship mm -hmm. so that's kind of just waiting for the time mm -hmm. uh, but everything is like you know it was legal so it was not kind of you know very hard for me to go through the process okay. just wait for the time and yep. then just apply and then get it wonderful and do you think a lot of people in your community nepali community are becoming citizens Yes, they are becoming citizens. Because, uh, as I mentioned, you know, uh, some of the people, because of the language barrier, they are having some problem, you know, going through the citizenship test. Process, yep. uh, uh, you know, the, they, are all, they have always fear of um, the, the test. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, that's the only problem that the 
people from my community are having, mm -hmm. but rest of the things are just waiting for the time. Once it gets five years, mm -hmm. then you know everyone can apply Absolutely. for it, and then and yes, you so, wanted to add sorry, something. Sorry, Ali, just yep. to piggyback off that, my I kind of discussed this was with, with my mom, and she said that. What, what the city and state can do is exhaust some of those resources towards educating people ahead of time. When you talk about, you know, people struggling with the citizenship test, mm -hmm. my mom was talking about how she used to have a disc that she would play in the car when she was going to the grocery store, dropping us off, you know, going to work, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. She would be playing it and it would ask, who's the, who is the first president of the United States? And she would answer along. Mm -hmm. What's the capital of the United States, Washington, D.C.? She's answering along, you know, and so maybe educate education and giving people information that mm -hmm. should be the focus ahead of time mm -hmm. and then once they are citizens they're able to jump right in and mm -hmm. they know how to mm -hmm. do what mm -hmm. to do yep you know? mm -hmm. and i think you know personally one of the other concern is just the volunteers that are at the booths um, helping people to register to vote and it seems with the non-citizen voting items we're putting another extra layer mm -hmm. onto their job responsibility you know things like that mm -hmm. and i think one other point is just it seems like apartheid yeah. The people who are citizens, here you are. The people who are not citizens, here you are. I mean, you, you are really dividing the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think personally, going to the booth, it belongs to people who went through the process, who've been vetted, you know, ins and out, who've been here legally for years and, you know, paying taxes and everything, and they become citizens of the greatest country of Earth. Mm -hmm. And when you get into the booth, you can vote from national election to the local to your next representative or the, to the school budget mm -hmm. that really affects you directly. Yeah. But I think we, like Mohammed, what you have done is what the focus is su supposed to be. Yeah. Those who are currently citizen, how do we make sure that they show up and participate in the democracy? Mm -hmm. You know, ballot items translated, done. Uh, a demo of the video, done. And I think, you know, uh, immigration also, as an immigrant, you know, mm -hmm. I think there was a reward. Be if you become citizen, it's not because just because you're having a passport, mm -hmm. but it is also you can vote, you are part That's of this right. country. And I feel with the non-citizen voting, you're taking that reward away from the people who yes. really, you know, were looking forward mm -hmm. to that. So do you have any sentiments around it? It seems we, we have like maybe two more minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm mean like, yeah, I came to this country in 2012, so since then, you know, I have been hearing people talking about the vote mm -hmm. for the local representatives to the national level, you know, for the presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I was kind of, you know, uh, not having that rights, and I felt so bad that I couldn't participate because I am not a citizen. So, you know, I that struck me time and again, and then, you know, all the time it. I was thinking about getting the citizenship, so I had to wait for the time, mm -hmm. and then finally, you know, the time is over, and now I can, but. you know, I can exercise my right. <laughs> and you can vote for everything, yeah. for all of and it, uh, from president to school board. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, yes, so this is, this is actually great and wonderful. Uh, maybe before we give Mohammed to close, can you tell your people in your own language about this in uh, Nepal, about the, the event? Sure, yeah. I'm Nepali. I'm in Burlington. I'm in Burlington. Burlington is 20 Allen Street. I'm in January 25th. I'm in January 25th. I'm in January 25th. I'm in January uh, Protect your mind. It's a very special day. It's a very special day. When is it? It's a February 8th. It's a very special day. 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 It's a very all right, so Guy, thank you very much for watching Ali's Corner here at Channel 17, and next month we will see you again with another great, wonderful show. Thank you so much, and have a great evening. Yeah, yes. thank you.